So, good day everyone. Uh, my name is Alexey Kondratenko and uh, I represent uh, Micron. Uh, it's a fully private research and production company from Russia. Uh, I'm an MMIC design manager and uh, my report uh, will be about uh, several uh, gallium arsenide uh, MMIC design examples uh, featuring uh, NI AWR software. Uh, at first, uh, let me tell you some words about uh, Micron company it's, uh, and its uh, my main business directions uh, and uh, we will consider MMIC design examples uh, right after this. Uh, so, Micron was founded in 1991 by Victor Günther. Uh, uh, probably you know it was a very difficult time for Russia and uh, the financial support of uh, government institutes and uh, uh, universities was very poor. And uh, eight people from Tomsk Institute of Automated Control Systems and Radio Electronics uh, decided to organize uh, their private company. Uh, so today we uh, 24 years old and uh, the company can be characterized by the next following parameters. Uh, this staff is uh, more than uh, 1,500 employees. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 28,000 meters square of the production areas. A gross receipt was about 40 million in uh, oh sorry 40 million euro in uh, 2014. And we have some representative offices in uh, Moscow, Vietnam, uh, Singapore, and Italy. Uh, as for Micron main business directions, uh, I will represent it briefly because uh, this is not uh, the subject of this event. Uh, but if you have, uh, if you will have any questions uh, regarding with it, uh, I and uh, my colleagues uh, uh, will try to answer you with great pleasure after the workshop. So. The first one is uh, telecommunication. Um, at present, our company is uh, leading uh, leading uh, manufacture of uh, telecom telecommunication equipment in Russia. Uh, more than uh, 10,000 microwave radio uh, radios uh, have been supplied uh, to uh, different customers. Uh, the next uh, quite young direction is, is radio location. Uh, Micron uh, develops and uh, uh, manufactures uh, radios for uh, river navigation and security systems. Uh, there is a manager of these products uh, on the conference and uh, you might ask him uh, any details uh, if you would like. Uh, our company proposes a uh, wide range of different uh, functional parts, microwave uh, models, blocks, uh, systems and so on uh, for, for microwave industry. Uh, the next direction is the development and manufacturing of microwave and measurement equipment and uh, different accessories, uh, I mean uh, different connectors, adapters, uh, calibration kits and so on. Uh, I cannot say that we try to be a competitor for the movies and shakies like k uh, National Instruments, uh, Rodo and Schwartz uh, and so on. Uh, our niche is uh, to produce uh, quite low cost and uh, not high end equipment. So this slide is about uh, different ex uh, microwave accessories. Uh, and uh, the last uh, our business uh, uh, last our business uh, di direction uh, related to this event is uh, microwave microelectronics. Uh, Micron has uh, a gallium arsenide process line and manufactures uh, mimics uh, for using uh, in, uh, in uh, company's own equipment. Moreover, uh, there is a design center which I represent and uh, our main tasks are, uh, of course, it's a d design of single and multifunctional mimics based on uh, our own gallium arsenide processes and uh, A3B5 processes of different foundries. Uh, uh, we perform uh, microwave on the measurements uh, ourselves uh, and the last task is uh, process design kit development. Uh, as for today, we have designed it about uh, more than uh, uh, 50 mimics for internal purposes as well uh, for external customers. Uh, and generally, we use our own gallium arsenide processes and uh, processes of two French uh, companies. Uh, uh, these are OMIC and UMS, I, I guess you know it very well. 
Uh, please notice that uh, when I said uh, 50 mimics, I mean uh, the project uh, featuring uh, AWR microwave office. Uh, there are two guys in our design team who are smited with uh, advanced design system from Kensite, uh, from Kensite, and uh, if uh, so, if we had the results of those two designers, then I can say uh, that we have realized more than uh, 75 projects. Okay, I apologize for a bit long introduction, and now we are, we are ready to uh, consider some uh, MMIC design examples uh, using uh, AWA Microwave Office. Uh, the first example is dedicated uh, to a process design kit development for our own 0.5 micrometer switch p hand process and design of uh, S band uh, digital phase shift uh, mimic uh, based on this PDK. Um, the defined technological process uh, was not frozen when uh, we were performing this work. Uh, however, we had taken a uh, decision uh, to develop PDK in order to um, unify initial data for MIMIC designers and to clear a feedback from our designers to a technological department which uh, develop and develops uh, different processes. I guess you know that uh, initial data for PDK development uh, are specific parameters of passive and active elements uh, of the defined process. Uh, uh, These are uh, uh, capacitance of MIM caps, uh, uh, resistances for thin film and mesoresistors, resistors, uh, some specific parameters for transistors uh, like uh, saturation current, uh, pinch, of, uh, pinch of voltage, transconductance and so on. Uh, next is uh, next are results uh, of uh, on wave measurements of S parameters uh, of uh, model elements. Um, of course, we need to know design rules for all the basic elements of the defined process. Uh, and uh, the last one uh, related to this example is the XML library development application node for registered users at AWR uh, website. AWR company proposes a dedicated tool named Model Wizard uh, for dynamically linked model development. Uh, I had a honor uh, for using this software and it's a really very uh, useful and efficient tool. And uh, you are if you are interested uh, in this, uh, uh, you could refer to uh, AWR representative and uh, they will provide you necessary information uh, about uh, model wizard capability and how you can get it. But as for this example, um, uh, this tool was not used. Uh, as I said previously, uh, the technological process was not frozen uh, when we were performing this work. Uh, and uh, this is the reason uh, why we had developed uh, the PDK based on XML fo format, but not DLL. Uh, these slides uh, demonstrate a typical flow of uh, MIM capacitor model development uh, as an example. Uh, the first step is uh, a manufacturing of uh, test elements. Uh, ger generally, there is a wafer with, um, uh, which includes uh, discrete elements with uh, different dimension dimensions uh, in order to uh, be possible to get a scalable model. Uh, on this picture, you can see a part of um, this wafer. Uh, these are for test elements uh, for MIM, ca MIM capacitors with uh, different dimensions. Uh, the next step is uh, on wafer measurements of elements parameters. Then uh, we should uh, to organize data processing. Uh, uh, we should uh, exclu ex exclude uh, influence of pads and uh, feed lines uh, from uh, measurement results and sometimes we ought to smooth uh, experimental data. Uh, after this uh, we can export uh, process data to AWR Microwave Office and um, uh, create a scalable model. Please notice that uh, XML library supports several type model types. Uh, these are uh, S2P file or SNP file in general case uh, with experimental data, or it uh, can be a set of uh, SNP files if we would like to describe uh, uh, scalable or parametric model. Uh, the second type is a model as a netlist. Uh, 
um, next, uh, of course, we can use uh, all uh, embedded models of microwave office uh, capacitors, resistors, transistors, everything. And uh, it's possible to define necessary parameters and integrate uh, such uh, models in, uh, in, your library, uh, in your library. And one more type is schematic. Uh, you can define a necessary combination of uh, embedded models in a schematic ed editor of Microwave Office uh, and uh, use uh, this scheme as your model uh, like on this picture. The last step is uh, model f uh, of the model flow is uh, um, um, scalable model verification. Uh, on this picture you can see uh, uh, calculated parameters in comparison with uh, measurement data for a capacitor which has uh, dimensions 100 by 100 uh, micrometers. Uh, okay, since uh, we have got um, uh, all expected models, uh, it's uh, necessary to generate uh, LPF uh, and XML files. So let's say some words about LPF. Uh, LPF or load process file is a text file which um, include uh, key information about technological process uh, for which you develop a uh, design kit. Uh, I mean such information as specification of uh, layers and uh, its uh, mutual alignment, uh, a specification of metal and uh, dielectric layers and its parameters for EM simulation. There are, there are, uh, there are um, layout export rules for GDS format as well as uh, DXF format. Uh, moreover, you can add a DRC rule uh, in this file. Uh, so LPF, uh, the LPF has very clear structure and there is no problem uh, to fill it uh, correctly. As for XML files, uh, these files include uh, include links um, to uh, to the developed models and uh, their layout representations, uh, which you have created previously. It's very uh, simple. Uh, it's very easy to uh, create uh, the XML files. Uh, you only need to manually uh, fill uh, corresponding uh, Excel file files uh, like on this picture. And after this, uh, only what you need is uh, to use a special script from AWR, uh, to which uh, converts uh, uh, Excel files to XML format. That's all. Since we have developed scalable models, uh, they uh, lay out representations um, and generated LPF and XML files, uh, it's necessary to uh, arrange all the files and uh, connect uh, a new library. So uh, now everything is ready for working. On this slide you can see um, some examples uh, of uh, the developed models. Uh, the first is uh, a switch mode transistor. Uh, you can see that uh, it's a parametric model. Uh, we can uh, drain source voltage is equal zero, but as for gate voltage, uh, we can vary it from zero to minus two volts. Of course, uh, you also uh, can see um, a corresponding layout representation. And there are two examples uh, of uh, passive models. Uh, these are uh, same film resistor and uh, MIM capacitor. Uh, so, that's all what I would like to say you about um, the possibilities of uh, AWR Microwave Office uh, concerning the PDK development uh, without any additional tools. Uh, a design of uh, an S-band phase shift uh, uh, MMIC was performed based uh, on above uh, maintained library. Uh, a specification of key parameters are presented on this uh, slide to, to so, operating frequency band is 2.5 to 4 gigs. Uh, uh, phase shift range uh, up to 355 degrees. Uh, phase step uh, by uh, 5.6 uh, degrees, and, and so on. Uh, I will not describe a phase shift uh, mm, a schematic in details. Uh, Let's only say that each uh, cell is uh, based on uh, low pass and high pass, uh, switchable low pass and high pass filters, and uh, 
and cold uh, mode PMs are used as uh, switch elements. But uh, if you are interested in any details of this schematic, uh, I will be open for, for your questions. Mm, on this slide, uh, uh, you can see a screenshot from AWR Microwave Office, um, which demonstrates an engineering process for one of the phase shift section. Uh, this section uh, provides a 5.6 degree uh, phase shift. Uh, you can observe uh, uh, phase shift cell schematic, uh, its uh, corresponding layout representation, uh, some equations, uh, and uh, calculated frequency dependencies uh, for um, uh, absolute phase, phase error and uh, parasitic amplitude conversion in the uh, operating frequency band. Uh, frequency dependencies for complete uh, scheme of uh, the phase shift uh, you you can observe here. So there are uh, insertion loss, uh, uh, possible phase shifts, uh, and uh, uh, round meter square uh, errors uh, for all the phase states. Uh, we ought to give uh, spacious. Uh, let me. Let me come back. I have forgot one thing. Uh, we ought to um, uh, give special attention for different auxiliary uh, elements uh, inside uh, AWR microwave office, like uh, uh, ideal uh, single pole double through switch or parametric sweep. Um, it th this is uh, really uh, useful things for uh, design of uh, multi-bit circuits. Okay. So, we have a complex schematic uh, which has required electrical parameters. Uh, we have uh, corresponding layout representation. And uh, the last step of is the uh, layout expert in, in accordance with the rules uh, which uh, we wrote in a layout process file. Uh, finally, we have a file uh, DXF or GDS format uh, which represent, uh, represents uh, initial data for mask set fabrication. So this is all what I would like to say about uh, first example. The second example is uh, dedicated uh, to a design of an X-band medium power amplifier MMIC verified with XCM. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, main electrical parameters. Uh, indeed, uh, this example demonstrates uh, how AWR Microwave Office can help to correct initial negative results. So, results uh, of the first iteration uh, of the design and manufacture of the amplifier MMIC are presented on this slide. Um, you can observe, uh, concerning uh, small signal parameters, you can observe that uh, there is a frequency shift uh, between uh, calculated and measurement data. As for large signal parameters, uh, experimental value of P1dB uh, power at 10 gigs uh, corresponds uh, to the requirements. Uh, so the first step is an analysis of reasons uh, why we have a difference between calculations and measurements. Obviously, a passive part or active elements of the amplifier uh, can be uh, a source of trouble. So let's start with uh, active elements. Uh, some time ago, MCAT engineering company has characterized our uh, 900 micrometer transistor cell. And uh, on this slide, you can see a schematic uh, of uh, the nonlinear model in uh, AWR Microwave Office um, schematic editor. Uh, this model uh, uh, take, uh, takes into account uh, thermal and trapping effects. Uh, and uh, also, on this slide, you can observe uh, uh, load pool measurements results at uh, 10 gigs for, for this transistor. Uh, so, some information about uh, nonlinear non model verification is presented here. You can observe that measured uh, IV curves uh, and uh, output power corresponds to uh, model at value. 
The very big conclusion is that uh, we have no problem with uh, active elements uh, for this design. Uh, as for uh, a passive part, um, uh, this is the result of um, uh, electromagnetic simulation of uh, uh, spiral inductors and uh, MIM capacitors using XCM. So you can see that um, uh, experimental data are very very close to data uh, which are corrected uh, using XCM as uh, for spiral inductors as well as uh, for capacitance. But uh, we have a very big difference uh, for, uh, simu for first iteration simulation. And uh, in conclusion, and conclusion is very simple. A uh, designer was uh, using incorrect models uh, for passive element during the first iteration. Uh, next step is electromagnetic simulation of more complex passive structures like um, uh, output and interstage uh, match circuits. Uh, you can observe here that uh, experimental data uh, have very good agreement with uh, correction uh, data using XCM. Uh, we have the same result for interstage mesh circuit. And finally, we can uh, recalculate as parameters and uh, compare uh, it uh, with measurements. And uh, I guess that uh, this result doesn't need any comments because uh, we have very good agreement. So the main conclusion of this example is uh, you ought to attend uh, to modeling of passive, uh, of passive elements and XM simulator is a very good choice for solving such a problem. Okay, and the last example is uh, about the design and simulation of X-band core chip MMIC. Mm, uh, uh, since uh, this mimic is intended for use in uh, space telecommunication system and the Micron company has no any space qualified process, we use uh, ED02AH process from Omic company. Uh, and the main electrical parameters of the core chip uh, are presented here. Uh, as I said previously, Micron company is an official user of two systems. These are AWR Microwave Office and uh, Advanced Design uh, System from K-Side. Uh, of course, both systems are very powerful, but in our subjective opinion, uh, there were several reasons uh, to give a preference of uh, to give a preference to AWR Microwave Office. Uh, uh, here, are some arguments uh, to choose uh, the solution. Uh, the main future of this uh, project is uh, that uh, linear and non-linear uh, simulators were used uh, for core chip um, MMSC design. There was no electromagnetic simulation and case for the selected approach is presented here. And uh, of course we need to give special thanks for um, uh, high quality of uh, OMIC libraries. Uh, some words about harmonic balance simulator. Um, uh, this simulator was used not only for calculation of nonlinear circuit parameters, but uh, for a bit uh, by bit checking of the attenuated phase shift uh, and switches to confirm that all control lines are correctly correctly connected to switch elements. Uh, I mean, uh, switch mode PHMs. And when we have done an analysis of separate functional blocks, uh, like in previous uh, examples, uh, uh, we can perform a complex simulation of uh, the core chip MMSC. So on this slide, uh, a block diagram uh, and uh, model in schematic editor of AWR uh, microwave office are presented. And some results uh, of uh, complex simulation of the core chip are presented here. So you can observe uh, possible phase shifts in uh, RIGS mode, uh, possible attenuator states and uh, TX mode, uh, uh, insertion, lo uh, insertion gain uh, in uh, RIGS mode and uh, return losses for um, uh, tran uh, receive and uh, transmit mode respectively. How can we check uh, relevance of using software uh, design approach and models? There is only one way uh, to get the required and expected experimental results. And some experimental data for two iterations are presented here. 
So I think it's a very good agreement. And finally, I would like to say simple thing that uh, uh, in general, Microsoft Office uh, is uh, is really uh, everyday workhorse for us, and uh, it's a really efficient tool which uh, allows us uh, to develop uh, different uh, commercial products. So, thank you for your attention.